Hello, my friends. This is not a happy time for this country. How can it be a happy time when blood is flowing all over the place? Kidnappings and all sort of nefarious activities all over Nigeria. Right now, these enemies of Jesus Christ are now facing the church. Kidnapping pastors, asking for millions and millions of Naira for them to regain their freedom. Things cannot continue like this. Ladies and gentlemen, things cannot continue like this. The time is now for you and I to do something about it. I'm having a discussion right away with Pastor Laddie Thompson, a security consultant with high proclivity for opinion molding and consensus building. Pastor Ladi will look at this issue with us. We're going to look at how did we get here? We're going to look at the solution to it. We're going to look at the state of Nigeria. Pastor Ladi, I welcome you to this discussion. My first question to you, look at what has happened in Nigeria today. The state of Nigeria security. Are you happy about what you see? Thank you very much, uh, um, Brother Bola Adewara. These are very deep and insightful uh, question. It will take a demon for anybody to be happy with the present state of this nation. Eight years ago, we thought it could not get worse. But now, we, have, we are on a, a trend that is not only dangerous, but it speaks of uh, an existential threat that could lead to the very end of Nigeria as we know it. This is the first time in the history of Nigeria that the value of human worth has sunk to such a low, low value. Mm. All over the country right now, the value of human worth is next to nil. And especially for those of us who are believers, when we remember that Jesus Christ came to give value to our lives, we are worth the blood of Jesus Christ, every man as far as God is concerned. So there can be no way any person will be very happy about this present situation. How did we get here, Pastor Ladi? Thank you. How did we get here? Hmm. Well, first of all, let us remember that uh, Nigeria has a colonial heritage with very many unaddressed flaws in the engine room of Nigeria. I'm talking about the fact that uh, the divide and rule legacy left us with a country where religious tensions have always been a part of us, corruption has always been a part of us, tribal sentiments has always been a part of us, and then the tendency to speak without communicating has always been a part of us. Leadership selection, you know, uh, challenges. We never get the best leaders has always been a part of us. But we got here when the global problem of global terrorism landed in Nigeria and began to operate from the 80s without Nigerians being aware. Now, the global problem is a hydra. It wears a religious disguise. It infiltrates your institutions and collapses a country from within. And uh, it is cunning, it is cruel, it's unrelenting, it is extremely intelligent. And it operated undetected for many years in Nigeria. But now, it's a full-blown case. Uh, so, I can say we got here because a superior, a superior enemy with superior intelligence, with superior understanding to what we have here, you know, came into our shores. And if anybody doesn't understand that, let me put it like this. Many times Nigerian uh, presidents and eminent persons have sicknesses and diseases that the Nigerian healthcare system cannot diagnose. At that time, they take them out to other nations with greater sophistication of thought, greater sophistication of, uh, of the medical healthcare, and they get treated. If they are stayed here, they will die. In the same way, we have a security problem that is beyond 
the level of thought of the Nigerian uh, security structure. The insecurity in Nigeria is now affecting the church. Now pastors have become object of kidnappings. Recently, the Methodist uh, um, leader was, uh, was uh, kidnapped, 100 million ransom paid. Those who could not pay the money, they killed them. How did we get here, Pastor Ladi? Well, you will remember that an elder statesman in the 60s in Nigeria did say something that um, as far as we're a united country, north and south, that our joys and uh, fortunes are contaminants, they're, they're the same. And so also are, are the adversities and misfortunes that befall Nigeria. So in this wise, it was just a matter of time. Because you see, global terror uses the sword of terror in a clinical way. It's, there's a method to its madness. It's supposed to be used to break the will of the nation. So going after what we call soft targets, apart from using religious as a cover, it goes after what we call soft targets, just to weaken the resolve of the nation, to make sure it can collapse easier on D-Day. So, I will say to you that um, targeting the church was done deliberately because they knew that it would make news. Mm. The terrible calamity we saw in our war is not isolated, it's symptomatic. And unfortunately, there will be more if we don't act quickly. For the Bible tells us something in Philippians 1, uh, verse 28, the Bible says, uh, we must not be terrified by our adversaries because to them it's a token of perdition. That means they won. The moment we are terrified, they are won. They won. Uh, but for us, when we refuse to be terrified, it is the proof of our salvation to God. Even God himself approves when we refuse to be terrified. So what I can say is this is that I think the owners now is on the church to come to the rescue of the nation. We got here because the federal government militarized the war against uh, terrorism. That was not a response that was really right. Everybody has to pass to play, including the church. And I believe that now that the church is being assaulted like this, we have every opportunity to now make available weapons of war, or shall I say, the church now has the opportunity to make available a wisdom that is better than weapons of war, that will change the tide of this slide into darkness. Yes, I agree with you, Pastor Madi. Um, but then, I want to ask a question uh, concerning these uh, kidnappings and uh, the attitude of the church paying money, 100 million naira, 50 million naira, some of them being killed. Must it continue like this? So we need to pay money for our freedom as Christians? What do you think can be done to this? Well, I spoke about a wisdom that is better than weapons of war, and this kind of wisdom is the preserve of uh, the Church of Jesus Christ. Don't forget that for us in the church, spiritual warfare at the highest level has always been a war of narratives. The Bible says there was war in heaven. Remember the dragon and the woman who was you know, clothed in the sun? That was a war of uh, narratives. And don't forget again that terror was the instrument of that war in heaven. The dragon had a tail with which it knocked out one third of the stars in the heavens. Now, the same dragon is on the earth, and that's what we are facing. So what can the church do? There are three things that I believe the church can do specifically in bringing the wisdom from above. Uh, fortunately, I've been discussing with this with some of the prophets and some of the apostles. And what I'm about to say to you is something that has come out of a collective prayer and uh, interrogation of spiritual things. Number one, we have to have a spiritual response to bring this wisdom 
written our weapons of war. And that one is a project, I won't talk much about it. It's a project called the Book of Testimonies. It's a spiritual device that we're going to use to invoke the bloodline. The bloodline will make all the difference spiritually across the entire nation. That's number one. Number two, we must remember that we must also have what I call very practical responses, apart from the spiritual. So for the practical response, it's very interesting. But uh, in uh, Nigeria here, what I believe that the church must urge both the mosque, the Christians, and everybody, we need to urge our people to enact a new law. Now, there's something that in, the, in U.S. history is called the Second Amendment. That Second Amendment is the right to bear arms, irrespective of whether you are in the military or in the militia or whatever. And the right to bear arms is a fundamental right for you to protect your life your properties and to also be a part of making sure that the sovereignty of your nation is not compromised. That's a second one. Now the third one that we have discussed is this, is that in the event of hostilities, you know the Bible would tell you things like, be true children, sin not, but if you sin. Now in the event that we do not stand up to the scriptures to please God enough to avert this thing completely. The third one is a fallback position where we are going to be instructing people, please go and buy a radio set and buy batteries. Because the modus operandi of this uh, asymmetrical warfare and hybrid threats is such that they will take out communications. In the days ahead, if they succeed and we don't match them properly, GSM phones will not work. You'll find out that electricity supply will become erratic until it is cut off. They are able to do this against us from within. And at that time, we would advise people, get your radio sets, because uh, what the church can do is that working with the mosque and collaborating properly, we'll be able to bring up transmitting stations, radio stations, that can now broadcast to you across the nation and give you an advisory on how we can still stay together as a nation to resist this invasion. Book of Testimony, how do you mean Second Amendment? Are you sure this will bring an end to these challenges in Nigeria? Well, for the spiritual weapons uh, wisdom that is better than weapons of war, I will just quickly say to you that uh, the capital we have for it is what we call no other ransom. No other ransom refers to Matthew chapter 20, that's 27 and 28, where Jesus says, whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, mm -hmm. but to minister and to give his life a ransom mm -hmm. for many. So no kidnapper can ask for any other ransom and that which has already been paid, the blood of Jesus. Now, when we activate the bloodline, the priority will be for ministers, actually. Wow, wow. Not necessarily for church members. For church members. Now, why is it that we say it's going to be for ministers primarily? Philippians chapter 1, verse 20 tells us why. We are soldiers of Christ. And anybody called into ministry knows that there are certain things that come with our calling. And the Bible says, according to our earnest expectation and hope that in nothing shall any of us ministers be ashamed but with all boldness that's when others are afraid mm -hmm. with all boldness as always so even now against this war of terror Christ will be magnified in our bodies whether by life or by death so what we're saying now is that the spiritual exercise primarily is for the ministers to trigger this bloodline. Wow. And uh, I believe that God is watching there was normally in every city, in every nation, there's a critical mass of ministers who when they sign up to this, it actually activates over the city. I'm praying that every city in Nigeria 
we have enough believers and ministers who can sign up to activate the bloodline. But Wonderful. No other answer. Wonderful. No Wonderful. other answer. This is interesting, Master Ladi. Very interesting. Uh, especially the that topic, the bloodline. I remember these, and I don't really know if the current church uh, will understand this, uh, the bloodline topic you've, uh, you, you raised there. Um, it's even dead back to the Bible. You remember very well. Uh, if, uh, in the land of uh, Egypt, you know, remember uh, the, the Passover night, saying that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I just hope that this current church will be able to live up to this responsibility, will be able to live up to this very truth, um, believing that many of them are not called after their belly. Well, you have had this. You have had this. He had given the solution in specificity because that what the church or what Nigerians is not just about the Christians alone, it's about our people, the Nigerian people generally, what we can do to eliminate this insecurity. It is achievable. It is doable. I invite you, our people, to join hands with us so that we bring this insecurity to an end. And I believe that with confidence in the word of the living God, we will achieve it. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. Bye.